Mm. I'm just up here chilling. Hey, beloved, how's everyone doing? YouTube family, how's everyone doing? I was listening to Closer. My name is Reverend Penelope. I run the channel Chemistry. Please visit our website and shop our products and services. I'll leave a link here below at Chemistry Spiritual Wellness. Hello, hello, hello. It's been a minute since I've been here today, and I'm excited to be here with you today and share some more knowledge with you. Hey, again, give you kudos about you doing the ancestors work. If you've been working on your altar and doing your shadow work, and man, you've been putting it in, and you've been doing the shadow work, the inner child work, and you've been raising your frequency, and you've been doing some healing, and you're ready to tap into your own inner magic. As some of us have, we've been tapping into our own inner magic. And if you're ready to do that, the ancestors altar is not the place to do it. That is a separate place where you uh, do your magic. Now, altar is good to have because the altar is all about change. It shifts things, change. It's all about bringing in change. Altar itself means to alter your reality. It's to bring in change. And you've been doing that with your ancestors. You've been bringing in the change with them. You've been uh, working on your mediumship skills. You've been asking them for insight, wisdom, and guidance and helping you navigate your journey, your healing journey. And maybe you're ready to work on some more things, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in your life. You know, you want to tap into your own magic. You want to see how to work your own magic. And you don't want to keep asking your ancestors for everything. You want to be able to tap into your own inner magic. That is the reason why you're there doing this healing as well. So you can tap into your own inner magic. And you may need their support every now and then. But <clears throat> for the most part, we want to learn how to do things on our own too. Okay? And so our ancestors, they also called on helping spirits. You'll see some of our ancestors, they use some of the saints. Uh, they went on to do conjure work because you su you are successfully conjure. If you have a, a relationship with your ancestors, you are using your psychic mediumship skills. You are conjuring. Okay? That is a form of conjure. And so some of our ancestors, they went on to use saints. Um, some of the Catholic saints, they went on to use them. Uh, you will see them to go on to use other uh, saints as well. You know, uh, like... La Madama, um, what is the other one? Black Hawk. You'll see them use other saints in hoodoo as well to get work done. Or they may have used Catholic saints as well. Saint Joseph is one of them that they use a lot. Saint Michael is one of them. The Archangel Michael is all what us also use, which brings me to um when I go into hoodoo and learning the occult about uh, the occult form of hoodoo, that was always important uh, important for me to understand too. Learning hoodoo is why our ancestors were re reading. What was they looking for in the Book of Solomon, the Five Book of Moses? What was this occult knowledge they were looking for, and how was they recognizing it in the Bible? Why were they using certain scriptures? Well, this book really helped help me understand that occult knowledge is the 72 Angels of Magic. And I really do recommend this book. I mean, it is working here. This is truly hoodoo. I promise you. you uh, it shows you how to work with these angels 11 days in a row. If you skip a day, you have to start this work over with connecting with each angel. Each angel in here, I like this book because it tells you the psalm to go to to invoke the angel. And it gives you uh, these these magical words and rituals that will help you connect with the angel. Okay? And, of course, I'm all about ritual. I, I already amped this up with my own ritual. I already have it amped up to work for me in the way I want it to work for me. Uh, I'm sharing the knowledge with you. And I've done a... a I've done a book review on this before, but I don't think I'm being as detailed with it as I'm being now on this book review, okay? So, you have these seagulls in here that you can work with. Be as creative as you want to. Again, magic is about tapping into your own creativity, too. Learning how things will work for you. I'm a candle person, so I like using candles and seals, so I don't know what you do. I don't know how you work, like working using seal. Maybe you like putting yours in a mojo bag. I don't know. 
But finding out how you can use these sequels that work for you to tap into these energies, these ethers, okay? Uh, there's also a psalm here. See how there is a psalm here that tells you where you can find uh, this angel within each psalm. I love this book. I think it is a must-have for any hoodoo practitioner that is trying to learn the occult knowledge of hoodoo. If you're trying to learn the occult knowledge of hoodoo, then I, I recommend this book. I certainly recommend it. Okay? And I, you know, again, we want to have a separate price that we erect uh, these uh, altars as well. And I start working with angels long before I start working with ancestors. The angels led me to work with the ancestors. Oh, I just love this song. The angels uh, led me to work with the ancestors. And uh, when I started finding out the ancestors were, some of the ancestors were angels, I was like, whoa. So have I been working with them all along? They was like, yes, yeah, some of us you have been working with, but you needed to go back and do the ancestral healing work because there's many of you that need prayer, that needs elevation and need soul healing in that family. And so I had to go back. I also had star ancestors too. Once you, uh, you know, get to doing your ancestors work, you and you go out, you'll see all these the igun, these igun that I like to call angelic beings, and you'll see in the Risha they call them angelic beings as well. But I like working. I worked with the angels first. I'm comfortable with doing this kind of work, and it really uh, makes me comfortable to know that. Our ancestors also use this work as well. You know, they work with these helpful spirits as well. So keeping your options open and knowing that you have other help out there to help you do whatever work you, you want to do. And again, there are 72 angels in here. I mean, the, I mean, it goes on and on, the work that you can do in here. Uh, they got one angel to, pre to, get, uh, to protect against diseases. And then you have a hoodoo is big and using seagulls. So if you've been doing hoodoo work, they use a lot of, of Solomon seals and things like that when they're doing uh, work too. So here's a seal here. Uh, what is another one? one of my favorites in here? I'm just going to choose a, uh, another random. Uh, this one is... To obtain friendship of the great. Okay, so if you're trying trying to obtain great friendship uh, with somebody, maybe somebody influential, uh, this you'll work with this angel. And you see, these are just small examples. There are bigger, you know, you they have one in here that they help you obtain money uh, to make you to. Uh, make your work and business popular. They have this angel. Maybe I need to get in that one. <laughs> Maybe I need to get on that one too. But this one, this this was um, is the angel for that. Here's the seagull. You simply copy these seagulls out of the thing. You can just uh, photocopy it. Here is the incant the incantation and invocation. You see in Psalms, you can go back and look at all of these. And like I said, this is this I think this is a must-have um, if you want to understand the occult knowledge behind hoodoo. I think this is a study that you must have. I, I, I just and I love it. And then working with these beings at some point, you will want to work with helpful spirits beyond your ancestors. You want to ignite your own energy. And tap into your own faith. And it's definitely what the and working with the ancestors and doing conjure work is going to help you do. There was something else I wanted to mention here. I wanted to mention altars as well. This would be, again, a different altar you're going to do this on. Uh, maybe your personal altar. 
A lot of country uh, people that do country, you'll see them have a love altar just for all, just for love work. They'll have an altar for just for healing work. They may have a personal altar where they may change the theme of it every week. It might be something different that they work on every week, and that's kind of like what I do. You know, I, I do have more than one altar, but my personal altar, I kind of shift it a little bit to where I can change the theme on it every week for me for me to focus my energy on what I want to work on. So I kind of do that with my altar. Again, the altar is about shift. It's about change. I like the altar because I like to have that. Some people, you know, they do well with the altars, but for me, I like having that access and that shift and change. Uh, in my home, I like to be able to access that Wi-Fi right then and there, that broadband, and have it right there uh, and feel like I'm not alone. I don't want to feel alone. So I like having my ancestors altar in my home, and I like being able to have a relationship with them in my home. I always feel safe. I feel protected. Then I have my own personal altar where I feel like, hey, I'm tapped into my own divinity. I'm tapping into instant power whenever I want to. And again, uh, you, I, I think you feel a big difference in a, uh, in a house that has an altar versus a house that doesn't have an uh, altar, any sacredness in, inside of it. It becomes the focal point in the hearth of the house. That's just my uh, opinion here. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about. What is the other thing I wanted to talk about? I wanted to talk about something else too, people. I'm sorry, YouTube family. Uh, but I th I think that's the most important thing uh about conjure as well. Learning that we do have options and that we we can work with science because you have the science. Uh, you have some people that go into the Arisha. Wherever your ancestors lead you to go, uh, however. But this is a great, like I said, a great book to study, to learn about the occult knowledge of hoodoo and see it present in your Bible. So I do recommend this book. I, I, I'm, I use this book if you want to do any type of work or connect with any of these, the Igun. Because when I look at the Igun, I look at them as angelic beings as well. Okay, so we're talking about the Igun. Uh, the collective and, and, and then keep in mind too a lot of this occult uh, knowledge came from our ancient ancestors it may have been tweaked but when you start going through this occult knowledge you're gonna feel something ancient something familiar about it once you start studying it and start immersing in it you're gonna feel something very familiar about it and you can you can practice it as it, it will become your own Okay, and it definitely uh, was like that for me. I don't know if I, 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 you know, and if it's anything else, you have any more questions about this, I may be missing something. I'm trying not to miss anything. Uh, you know, please give me your questions here. If you have any questions about erecting an altar, uh, you know, again, you'll find yourself doing this very common for a conjurer people that do conjure because you want to focus your energy. You want to make sure that you're working with the correct ethers and you're bringing in the energy that you need to get the job done. And that's when these different altars are going to come into play. You're not going to be able to use just one altar to do everything. You're going to find yourself erecting altars, maybe changing the things uh, to tap into the energy that you need to tap into. Okay, so don't feel bad or, you know, feel like, oh, I got to do another altar. You know, it, it happens, you know, to get the work done. We have to do what we have to do. Okay, uh, I don't think I'm missing anything. If you have any questions about, you know, altars or or helping, helping spirits, these are helping spirits, light spirits. Keep it safe. These spirits are, most of these angels, uh, angels are very... Uh, safe to work with. I'm always going to recommend something that's uh, that's safe. And if it's not safe, I'm going to let you know, hey, proceed with caution. Okay, but I think this is a great book and I do recommend it. Uh, you, should, it you should have it in your hoodoo collection if you're trying to understand the occult behind uh, the hoodoo. Okay.
I think that's all for now, beloveds. And I thank you so much for being here with me today. If you have any more questions um, about altars, put it in the comments. Like, love, namaste. I say love one.